while we may disagree on the issues regarding water sector reform, it is important to recognise the passion displayed on this important issue across the floor. This is encouraging to see as it demonstrates then strategic importance of water to the proper functioning of a modern economy and society. And I have to say as I've sat here for the last two days and indeed most of the day today, I, I'm hugely impressed at the ability of most of the people on the far side to be able to uh, foretell the future. I, I hope you're continuing to use your crystal ball theories. Unfortunately, the passion of the debate has not been matched by solutions or constructive ideas from the opposition. We have heard much bluster about non-payment, resistance, protests, court cases and imprisonment. This type of messaging will not rectify the problems of our public water and waste water systems. It will not address the high levels of leakage the inadequate wastewater treatment levels or the problems with water quality or supply in some parts of this country. Consolidating and building on the reforms made to date is the only viable path to lifting restrictions on drinking water, to ensuring that people in 44 towns and villages no longer see raw sewage discharged into local rivers and lakes and preventing towns and cities from running out of water or becoming dependent on water treatment plants in breach of drinking water regulations. Just imagine the demonstrations when the demand in Dublin for drinking water isn't met. Just imagine the protests from the hoteliers, from the tourist industry, from the shops, from the retail sector, from the houses themselves coming out on the street protesting against the fact that they don't have adequate drinking water. As Irish Water continues to make progress under the various initiatives outlined in detail by my colleague Minister Kelly last night with a more sustainable funding model that includes domestic water charges, we will create a more resilient quality public water system of which we can all be proud. Many deputies raised the issue of unpaid water charges and the pursuit of arrears during the course of the debate and I wish to comment on this issue up front. My colleague, the Minister for the Environment, Community and Local Government, will soon bring proposals to government on this matter to expand upon existing provisions in water services legislation. It is not tenable for those who are paying are disadvantaged in any way by those who can pay but refuse to pay. This would also place the burden of the cost of upgrading and improving a deficient water system onto the next generation. Minister Kelly has always insisted that Irish water distinguish between those who want to pay but can't as opposed to those who refuse to pay. Those who want to pay but are in financial difficulty will be able to avail of easy pay options and instalment plans, just like any other utility. Those who don't register and don't pay will not be able to avail of the €100 Euros water conservation grant and will be liable for a late payment fee. I wish to refer to some of the benefits accruing from Irish Water's new approach to the provision of water services. For example, Irish Water's asset management approach that underpins infrastructural investment is already realising considerable benefits in project costs and timeliness of delivery. Let me give you some examples of projects where Irish Water's approach to capital investment will make real savings. Rings End Waste Water Treatment Plant, a saving of 170 million. Greater Dublin Area Drainage Project, saving of 30 million. Cork City Water Supply Scheme, saving of almost 22 million. Navin Mead Water Supply Scheme, saving of almost 10 million. Kerry Central Water Supply, Saving of nine Thank you, million. Minister.